Hello, everybody. A uh, very warm welcome. We're uh, very happy that uh, there are people here so late uh, on, on the day. Uh, no respect. <laughs> really appreciate that. So uh, we hope uh, to make it worth your time. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, documentation. I think it's one of the four constants of problems we have in IT. It's like documentation, printers, DNS, and caching, I think. <laughs> firewall. A firewall, yeah. <laughs> the network, the network, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, no, I think it's a challenge everybody has, and we, 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 we would like to share our uh, experience with it and what we're doing with Backstage to solve uh, some of the problems. So, uh, who's should talking? Should we ask anyone using Backstage today? One, two. Uh, you're not allowed to, to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yeah, you people. Yeah, oh, that's uh, good. He's not allowed to answer either. So, <laughs> 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 all right. Yeah, a couple of people. Uh, every time Martin and I uh, uh, make a presentation, we try to find one of the coolest pictures we have. So we're that vain. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and uh, I also make music in my free time. And it was uh, last year uh, in uh, with my friends in Holland uh, when when I was on my way to go backstage. So I think well, that's uh, pun. Uh, I actually asked why there's actually on stage and not backstage picture yeah. of him, but I said it's uh, not, he wouldn't share. No, uh, it's not, it was, <laughs> yeah. not that cool. Um, so let's keep going. Um, we're both working uh, at VIPS uh, Mobile Pay, or better known as uh, VIPS here in Norway. Um, we're part of the platform team. So it's, it's, it feels a bit unusual for both of us as, as kind of ops, IT ops people to talk on a developer conference. But yeah, th these are two worlds that are, are like growing together uh, in a really uh, quick pace. And especially in a platform team, we need to serve the, the, all the development teams as, uh, as best of our effort. So um, we're finally welcome to Attend NDC. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm a bit scared with a room full of developers. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I think we, we can manage. Yeah. So help us. Um, yeah. So for our platform, uh, Vips is a is a is a, is a product-minded company, um, and so we also try to treat our platform as a product, have a product mindset, and um, it's really about creating stuff that our customers, our our users, uh, need. So. I have to say, things come and go sometimes uh, in, in a very high pace that we think we have a good idea, but it doesn't land in the organization as much as, as we want to. And then we just kill it and, and, and go to the next thing and make it, uh, make it better. Um, and one of our, our main goals is, is make everything as, as uh, self-service as, uh, as possible. Um, so it, that, that's kind of the background uh, where uh, where we're from and uh, what what kind of people we are and what we're deal dealing with uh, on a on a daily basis. So let's 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 talk a bit about documentation because we're doing stuff and I really like making presentation because you need to kind of step back and yeah why are we do doing this? Um, and I, I think there are we create documentation about the stuff uh, you use so. That's uh, all the systems you, you buy, uh, SaaS services, and maybe software you buy and install on, in your own en environment. And in our case, it's also we need to create documentation about the stuff we develop. Um, and then there are also, in my opinion, two areas. That's the external documentation. So the, the documentation we create for uh, users of, of our services. And that's often the... The, the good part that's nice and shiny and well structured and uh, and and all that kind of stuff and then it's like the internal stuff uh, you need to to document on as well and and that's the area where we're going to talk about and, and focus on uh, uh, in uh, in in this talk. Sorry, and you're allowed to ask questions during the session. I don't. We're not liking the Q and A thing in the end. Yeah, already. Yeah, perfect. Um, because you guys said that you don't consider yourselves as developers, like as platform engineers, right? Yeah. Um, so that's kind of new to me because, uh, from what I understand, the term kind of refers to um, just the part of development and sometimes the most core development because you have to often like um, provide APIs that are uniform and all that. Mm. And we do have developers in the platform area in oh. MIPS, but. Yeah. You guys are. No, no, we are. No, we're not. Okay. So we, 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 I think, especially, 
you, Martel, are good at scripting and like bending things code-wise if, if we're doing something, but don't ask us to write uh, any code. Well, you, we can chat GPT. Yeah, 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 that will solve everything. Yeah. AI, AI. Explain this <laughs> to me. <laughs> so, yeah, um, let's, uh, let's go on then. So, and this is what I think is, uh, in, uh, I think is always interesting. Um, um, every time I have discussions with teams, uh, it's like, who are we writing the documentation for? And th the one group is the developers. So for each other, onboarding new uh, uh, colleagues and that kind of stuff. And that's often really, they, they talk the same language, as I always say. So it's very easy. They can read comments in the code. They can, it's often easier. But it gets interesting for me when it goes outside of the team. So uh, maybe cross teams or going to the platform team and operation. In, in VIPs, we have a 24-7 20, operations team. They need to have information as well if they see an application on Kubernetes going uh, wrong. So uh, that's one of the, the audiences for, for documentation as well. They also have a, have a different need uh, often. And then there's the, this fun group, the architecture, and especially the governance group. They always want to have documentation and drawings and pictures and, and all the cool fun stuff. And uh, it, 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 it's hard. And I think there isn't a silver bullet to, to solve all these needs and, and the ways of, of presenting it. Uh, but um, this is how we try at least to close the gap uh, uh, a little bit. Um, so uh, going... Into into backstage. Uh, yeah, I tend to go, but there's a camera, and I need to. I don't care. Okay, yeah. move around. Um, so we had Martin here. He was at a, at a point in time uh, doing some pretty funky stuff, and he was uh, converting uh, Markdown files into Confluence spaces, because the idea is, um, as a, as a coder, you want to use as the least amount of tools uh, you can. Uh, yeah. So if you can write your documentation in your repository where your code lives, it's Nice, you don't have to go into Confluence, this sometimes black hole of, of information and where you put your uh, vacation dates uh, as well. So you don't have to switch system as well. You can put it in, uh, in MD files. We're pretty used to that right, right now. Uh, so Martin was thinking, hmm, maybe I can get that information and put it somewhere on Confluence. Ah, that got to be a little bit tricky. It's, uh, it worked, it worked, but... Uh <laughs> As we say in VIPs, it was more hassle than dazzle. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, on the other hand, we had the governance and, 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 and some overall, overall uh, like the, the operations teams. We need to have a, build a better service catalog on what we have, what do we, where do we find the information as well. Um, and then uh, in addition to that, uh, our, our platform team uh, developed uh, our own uh, kind of portal with self-service uh, things. Uh, which was basically pretty good, but then it comes to we're not coders and you have to maintain it and update it and all that stuff. It was, again, it worked, but it was not great. Um, so, yeah, how did we end up with Backstage? It was basically all these things came together and we just uh, uh, <laughs> Googled it. <laughs> Uh, so that was it was just I think uh, uh, lucky for us that we we ended up when uh, just around the time that uh, backstage got a little bit of uh, traction. Um, so let's dive into uh, backstage then. It's uh, developed and open sourced by uh, by Spotify and it's incubated by the CNCF in, in 2020. Um, yeah. The latest version is 1.14, and we, we started in October 2021 to put things in a kind of a, uh, a time uh, perspective. And it, and it just started like um, exactly where you are. Some, we had some ID and some others in the organization were, um, had heard of it. And then it's, uh, I have to say, a luxury for, for us in the platform team that we have access to so many developers and a, a very... Um, team-minded spirit. So, um, yeah, a bunch of enthusiasts came together, spinned up the container first locally, and then we deployed it in, in Azure as well, and, and just started playing around with it. Um, yeah, and, and 
that they have an, uh, who are adopters of uh, of, uh, of backstage worldwide. And I think that one of the biggest is uh, American Airlines. They they called it um, run runway. Yeah, yeah, runway. They called it uh, called it runway. Yeah, that's, that's funky. But uh, but also in Norway, uh, I read on the side that Lunar and Intility are uh, are using it as well. So um, that's uh, fun. Um, so what do you get uh, out of the box? Uh, it's it's when, late in the so I had to. When did it when did when did you put in this? Yeah, just before. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, you get uh, what they called uh, the the software catalog, uh, the tech docs, and you can put in some plugins. The tech docs is basically technical uh, 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 a plugin, but it's it's really one of the pillars where it's built on. And I just read on the website that Kubernetes stuff is now out of the box as well. So uh, okay. I had to put it in the slide. Yeah, so, yeah. perfect. Um, yeah, to make it even more, because it's late, we, uh, he, he used this AI uh, stuff to make some images. So, uh, <laughs> oh. yeah. Um, the, the, the software uh, catalog is built around uh, what they, they called uh, the system model. Um, any C4 model enthusiast here? One, two, three. OK. Did really screwed with my mind, and um, because it's different, a bit different from the C4 model. And I talked to Simon Brown about it uh, after his talk, and he said, "Yeah, that's right." And I, I, he worked at Spotify to help them. They are using the C4 model, but they have a different version internally in Backstage. And that, that uh, annoyed me a little bit, because uh, I really like the, the the C4 model, uh, and it's, it's a bit different. But uh, but let's start there. Um, when you're going to put stuff in, in backstage, you kind of, yeah, you're building in a way your architecture as well. And it's all start with a domain and, and a system. So in, in, in VIPs, we have the, the payments domain, and then we have a system called card payments, for example, that handles all the, all, all the card payments. Um, a system is always part of a domain. That's easy. And that consists of components. Um, and here, if you know the C4 model, this is more of a container. This is kind of a deployable, uh, deployable unit. You see the backend service, data pipeline, website, library. Um, so that you always need to put a component into, connect it to a system. And then you can add resources. This can be databases or, or anything. It, it depends how granular you want to, to document uh, your, uh, your system. Right now, we're fixing very on the domain system and component side of things. Uh, the, the resources are a bit on how granular what do you want to make it. I feel sometimes it makes more noise than it, 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 uh, it gives you. So if you have an important database, it, it's, it's lo uh, logical. But yeah, if you have some supporting service, it's, yeah, why, why do it? Um, and that all kind of uh, serves uh, an, an, an API. And yeah, you can have four API types. And um, yeah, Martin will show later on how this looks like. In, uh, in, he's the demo guy, so. <laughs> I'm just here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and this is another slide. Um, you all also have to set owners and, uh, and users. So we have uh, it fully Azure AD integrated. So all the teams and users are synced with Backstage. So if, um, and that, I think that's where the beauty comes in. If kind of an, um, com for, take the operations team, a component in, on Kubernetes, Kubernetes is causing some havoc. They could go in in Backstage, look it up, and they see the team who owns it and exactly the people who are in the team. So you have kind of a straight away uh, the people who you can contact in, in case of an uh, emergency. So Martin, would you be so kind? Yeah, we got this guy again. Oh, the raccoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't remember the prompt we used to create this one, but um, oh, let's see. The notes. Um, yeah, we're only using one computer. So. Any questions so far? Yeah. Fire away. Yeah, so you can have time to. Uh, no? Cool. Let's um, du duplicate and then. Question. Yes. Are you using the C4 uh, documentation in the solution? 
I tried, but uh, some teams do, some teams don't, and then yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I and I I really like C formula. So sometimes I see some scribbles on the confluent pages, or and I create the C formula, and I'm like, here, yeah, really cool, cool. It really, yeah, and then it's yeah. So some some people fly with it, and some people don't, and then it's difficult to. Uh, All right. And then the question is, what, what are you going to focus on, right? Uh, so then we thought maybe this is the next best thing to focus on uh, to get kind of in a, in a system model. And, uh, yeah. So should we just start in, zoom in v VS Code? or Yeah, I, I will zoom in when I explain what oh, we're okay. talking about. <laughs> Relax. Uh, we can, so backstage is nothing if you don't have a complete so, uh, software catalog. A software catalog is basically what we back in the days called uh, CMDB. You can't yeah. use that word amongst developers because they tend to, I don't know, freeze at least. And the beauty of uh, the CMDB <laughs> in Backstage is that it's based on a YAML file. And we all love to write YAML with a with measuring the indent and stuff like that. So, but at least that's uh, that's uh, what it is, and we can relate to it. Um, so, you model up your entire um, uh, service and your components in a YAML file. So I will show you how it looks in Backstage, but let's first take a little bit look at uh, how it's defined. So, first off, we have a compo uh, a kind of component. And then we have the metadata. So Box is a service that we have. I won't tell you which service in the Vips app it is. Um, but that's, uh, that's, uh, that's OK. Um, so you put in the name and description. And then we have uh, stuff for uh, uh, something called annotations. And if you're familiar with Kubernetes, uh, annotations is uh, something that you're used to. Uh, the annotations part in uh, Backstage is used by the plugins, mainly. Uh, I will talk a little bit about the plugins later, but you can see, for example, that the uh, Kubernetes label selector is used by the Kubernetes plugin uh, inside Backstage to fetch information from a Kubernetes cluster about this entity. And then we have stuff like uh, uh, type specific uh, specification, the, the team who owns it, and which system it's a part of. Uh, in this case, the component and the system has the same name. That doesn't necessarily have to be like this, but there's only one component uh, serving this system. Um, further down, they have configured a few APIs. Then we're getting a little bit more complex, but the, basically what you need uh, to start off uh, adding something to your to your um, to your uh, CMDB or your service, service catalog. catalog. Sorry, yeah. that's what we have here. You can actually ditch the annotation as well. So if you don't have any plugins, then you will just have uh, a small YAML file in your repository. And then if we go into Backstage and uh, not show this one, but um, this one. We can find Box. Let's, let's try. Oh. This is Box. Uh, so th this is how it looks. So Backstage will scrape our uh, repositories, in this case uh, GitHub, and then we'll read the, the YAML file, and then it will uh, add all the um, all the links to the system, to the APIs, and so on. Uh, and you can also view uh, view it as uh, as the the um, raw raw data, or you can figure out uh, use it as JSON if you want to connect an API uh, or something to to Backstage. Um, Show the view. You can speak to me. Oh yeah, so the the view source uh, thing. Yes, we are, we, are we, can, we, are, we can view the source. I'm sorry. And uh, this is where Backstage is really good. So it's connected to to everything, but it's not 
necessarily relying on having its own engine. So it just refer references the URLs and go into the system that it's actually holding or uh, responsible for, for the data. So now directly from uh, the, um, the component in, uh, in the backstage, we can go to view source and then we go into the uh, GitHub uh, repository. Um, also, can I show this? Yes. Uh, yeah. This is the team that created it. So, as Bastian said, there is a connection to um, Azure AD in our case. And they have defined that Team Cup is the owner of System Box. Uh, <laughs> so, then I can navigate around and I can figure out, okay, who are who is actually responsible for this system uh, and uh, what other uh, systems are they uh, uh, responsible for. Cool. So that is, that was it for the uh, first demo. Questions? Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out like, um, first of all, the YAML file you showed yes. is the YAML file that you use to actually um, not deploy but configure backstage, right? This is only uh, the catalog info file you need in. Uh, so if we go to view source, uh, you can see the same. This is the catalog info file is what the backstage used to create uh, the component and connect it to the system yeah. uh, and so on. So, so what happens in every uh, repository uh, in both GitHub and Azure DevOps, uh, we, cr we create this file that defines the the thingy <laughs> that's living uh, in that. Uh, so you, yeah, here it's the input for uh, for backstage. So what back, backstage basically is doing is just pulls the information. It doesn't contain any information. It just pulls the information from the from the repositories. Mm. And if you update your YAML file and you open this component, it says, "Hey, I've got a new version," and uh, okay. it updates itself. So basically, what we see here is only what's in the repository, right? Yep. Yeah. How how does uh, maybe I'll we'll get to it, but how does Backstage actually fi discover this? There's a GitHub or Azure DevOps connector, so you will f configure uh, the uh, in your app config JSON from Backstage. Yeah. yeah. So, so when you configure Backstage as a service, like as a like Backstage itself, right? Yep. Yeah. So you you. You configure it to search the entire yeah. repo? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or every repo, or whatever or you decided to read. Yeah. Or an organization. Yes. Or like yep. that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go into GitHub and you create an app, and then it's OAuth permissions, and then it's uh, all that yeah. jazz. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, were you supposed to show APIs in this uh, demo? It's It's late. No, no. They know what I. No, you can uh, maybe show it. Uh, so what you also get kind of out of the box is that uh, if you define your Swagger file in, in yeah. the YAML file like Martin did, um, Quick, quickly I can show it. Uh, so um, let's go back to box. Yeah, there it was. So they have uh, let's say retail API. I don't know where I'm going now, but then you can go into the definition. So when you specify a type of uh, so there's multiple types of components that you can create and add to your uh, service catalog. Um, API is one, uh, and then you'll just specify the path to your uh, Swagger file, and then Backstage will render that Open AI, uh, API specification. Open AI and Open yeah, API. That's uh, that's yeah. <laughs> that's a hard one these days. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's soon IPA, so we, that's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's back to the uh, to this one now. Yeah. Cool. No, because oh. I am in. Yeah. That's the problem with uh, having one computer and. Uh, that's better. Yep. Yeah. Jira of reading documentation. Tech docs. Um, it's uh, like why we why we uh, why we. Um, one of the reasons we, we started this. So what we now already have seen is that um, it's very easy because the search engine works in Backstage. If you want to look something up from another team's API, it's already easy to find without going to Confluence or looking into repository and that kind of thing. So that's already, uh, I think, uh, a big step we, we have made, uh, made there. Um, I'll use this one. 
Yeah, switching screens and so on. It's, there we are. Ah, there we are. So it's one of the uh, core pl plugins. And like I said, we want to keep the documentation as, as close to the code. Um, the MKDocs plugin uh, just converts Markdown uh, to HTML. Yeah, so everyone who's used GitHub pages, they know how this works. You write the Markdown, and then it, some kind of plugin, in this case MKDocs, will convert into HTML, and then Backstage renders it. Yeah. Uh, it supports Mermaid and all that kind of funky stuff uh, Mermaid brings, so plenty of ML diagrams and all that. Um, so um, that's why I was asking uh, if this C4 guy could make a plugin for this. That <laughs> so we could render it easily, but yeah, I'll keep that for now. Um, so it's yeah, your turn again, Martin, to, to show the, the YAML file. So this is again, so the first was the catalog info YAML file we put in the repository to uh, register the entity. And this is the other thing we need to put in the repository, the mkdocs uh, YAML file to configure where the docs are located and, and that kind of funky stuff. Okay. So this was the API. Now um, let's go in back into Box, figure out what they are doing. Um, so it, um, yeah, I'm just going to find the component. There we are. Uh, is this screen OK, or do you want me to zoom? Uh, zoom a bit. I got conflicting messages. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so. The documentation, this is uh, a system under development, so I hope they will improve their <laughs> documentation at some point. Uh, but this is, uh, Backstage is now pulling the markdown files from, um, from, uh, from GitHub and the repository. And the way it's done is that back, Backstage, when it indexes everything, it actually creates the HTML files uh, before anyone visits it. Uh, we have configured this in Azure, uh, so all the HTML files is stored in an Azure storage account. If you are an AVS or a type of guy, then it's an S3 blob. Uh, and if you're using any other cloud or on-prem solutions, you will figure it out. Um, so each time uh, uh, documentation is updated, uh, next time someone visits it, it will recreate re the um, the HTML file. Um, the plugin also have a lot of fine, uh, cool integrations. So you can, for example, mark a part of a text, and then you can open a new GitHub issue. And then it will sort of, uh, uh, not sort of, it will uh, get the text that you highlighted, and then you can write some additional information telling, uh, saying then why you have some feedback on this uh, particular, uh, particular uh, documentation. So that's fully integrated. Uh, works with uh, GitHub only, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so then how is this configured? Now, if we go into the source, oh. again in box, uh, they have the catalog info again. Let's just zoom in. And there you can see the tech docs reference now. If you only specify directory dot, then it defaults to a docs folder. Uh, so everything within docs will render as uh, the documentation page uh, you have uh, here. And you have also po uh, the possibility to configure uh, an mkdocs file. So if you specify, I will show another repository, but if you specify uh, your own navigation, You can adjust how the, the uh, side menu in Backstage looks. Uh, if you don't specify anything, it will just create a, a menu point for each markdown file that it can find in the folder. So in this case, the docs folder. If we find some documentation that is way better, uh, 
hopefully. I if you wrote it, Martin. We, we have some internal Vips developers in the room, so uh, you can read the docs on the entire Vips tech platform. Um, and then you have a little bit more complex um, complex uh, MK doc setup. So then you can actually, if you're really keen to do uh, funky stuff, as Bastian likes to, to say, then you can add in uh, extra uh, CSS if you want. And you can also um, fine tune your, uh, your navigation. But if you don't want to fine tune anything, as I said, every markdown file will be a menu point uh, where they're using the H1 tag as the actual name. Yeah, question. question. If you don't specify, will the navigation be yes. sub drop downs and stuff? No, no, it's just list, uh, yeah. So everything that is, uh, since this is markdown, uh, everything that's um, the uh, under here, everything here will be rendered as e uh, a menu point itself. Yeah. Uh, and they're using the first uh, H1 uh, tag as the name in the in the menu. So. That was Tech Docs, the plugin, I think. Yep. Yeah. Now let's see if we can actually figure out how to yeah, switch okay. quickly. So, so what what especially I think is it's good here. It's it's easy to find because you have a portal and you can easy, easily contribute to someone else's uh, uh, documentation, if you read something uh, that maybe not is uh, it's outdated or something, you just create a pull request, they get it in the repository, and it's business as usual. I think that's that's the key here. It's just another pull request. <laughs> uh, and I think that's uh, will be part of the, uh, the success. Cool. Um, is it working now? Mm -hmm. Ah, cool. New picture, <laughs> plugin hybrid uh, moves. Uh, plugins. So um, um, I think it's best to show you. Um, this is where the, I think the fun part starts for. Um, oh, can you do the magic again? Yeah. Um, th this is where the fun part. So I always refer uh, as backstage as kind of a vacuum cleaner. It just sucks out information from everywhere. It doesn't contain information uh, uh, itself. And it, this is where the, the plugins come in. This is the, the website from, uh, from backstage. Yeah. Feel free. And here it's, uh, it's pretty much. You probably, if you go there, it's, it's I won't say a plugging uh, every week, but uh, it's, it's more every time I, I go here before. Uh, for a thing. There's a nice one, Azure Resources, created by Martin Ernst, uh, another guy. Some love. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll show it to you. He will show it to you later. And, um, it, it, and that's, I think, the fun part as well. Someone from Intility made a VS Code extension. So if you're defining your YAML file, it gets checked in, in VS Code as well. So and that's how we help out each other, I think. So here you can, uh, yeah, that's yeah. almost everything. Uh, yeah. GCP, Grafana, it's, yeah. So, um, this is the, uh, the p uh, open source plugins, actually. Yeah. 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 You have paid plugins now, you know? Yeah. Spotify yeah. is trying to oh, capitalize get some money. On yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, I think all the, all the usual suspects are there, maybe not in all the, 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 the information you need, but uh, this is where uh, I think a lot of the power uh, come in. So if, if, especially if you relate this, uh, you can go to the demo from uh, mm. plugins as well. Um, for the other teams, uh, right? So um, the platform team is using, uh, we can, can we show the CI CD uh, plugin? Yes, let's take box. I don't know what uh, it is. Uh, so, I don't know how many plugins we have installed, but we have Tech Docs, uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes, Azure, of course, <laughs> Azure, Azure pipelines, uh, GitHub Actions, Azure Resources. Uh, yeah, the Azure plugin. Yes, and that was. We have time. So when we investigated backstage in the first place, one of the key things was we are 100% in Azure. Vips is built on Azure. Uh, and 
what we discovered was that there is no there's no integration with Azure uh, that exists. So we, but we already knew that since it was open source and someone told me that TypeScript was uh, cool and it was easy, uh, <laughs> then we can create our own plugin for uh, adding in Azure. Because we figured we can't invest a lot of time and money in this system if it's impossible to connect to the actual data centers that we use. Um, but uh, that's uh, that is actually really possible to extend into uh, whatever plugin you want to to write. Um, so yes, box uh, they. Oh, I need oh. to I need to ask uh, someone. I know why you because you're a car enthusiast, so it's Formula One box box. <laughs> and, uh, you're just using yeah. the box all the time. That's what I said to my dog when when I want her to go to sleep. Box. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, CI/CD uh, is uh, the GitHub Actions plugin that we use. Uh, then you can quickly see, like in an operational uh, situation where something failed, and you can f quickly figure out was there a recent deploy. Yes, no. Uh, if there was, probably related. Um, you can get some if <laughs> if you're running in uh, Kubernetes. in Kubernetes, then you can find information about uh, that one. I will find another application that is in Kubernetes. Let's take the smallest test app that we can uh, can find. provides some information like how many pods uh, is running in the current deployment, uh, is there any errors, uh, current memory usage uh, based on the limits and requests. Uh, and from there you kind of can figure out, okay, do I need to log in to investigate anything else? Um, the Azure plugin, and I actually check these guys. So there are security recommendations for this box thing. But I figured out that uh, since it's under development, I find it, uh, it's OK. We will talk when the, if this still exists in production, then we we'll need to talk. Uh, but it's, it, it serves the point. So this is information that we wanted to surface to developers uh, as part of the context. Not all of our developers, I can say, is really familiar with how Azure works. Uh, they don't necessarily use the Azure portal. They are always in a pipeline a context or in their um, in their uh, IDE, so VS Code or Rider or whatever they use, and then they don't get this information. But once we surface this kind of information into Backstage, then the engineering manager of that team can quickly see, hey, <laughs> why do we have security recommendations when we're going to production next week? Um, Stuff like that. Um, and the thing is, it's just information that's already there, right? We're yeah. not writing anything. We're just getting it from Azure and put it somewhere in a, in a central place, uh, which saves the hassle of going, logging into Azure portal, finding your blah, 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 all of those kind of things. Now we have it in one overview. It's like, uh, yeah. Yeah, and you can go from backstage to Azure, uh, the portal, and then fix your uh, fix your issues. Yeah, so you see the resource group, that's all based on those annotation tags. So we uh, we require that people tag their resource groups so that it will, uh, for several purposes, of course, but you get out of the box it, that it shows up in, in backstage as well. Yeah. Any questions about plugins? Uh, yes. You said that you guys wrote the Azure plugin because you said it didn't exist. Yes, we wrote it. Yeah, when we started it. So, so basically, writing the, the plugin, you, you so from what I can imagine, writing the plugin meant that you have to provide the, the, the backstage API with the data that it expects from Azure, right? So, no, so if I may, Martin, if I, then I can test if I understand it correctly. What, what the plugin does is just when it gets uh, on this component uh, uh, page, it checks, hey, you have a, in your YAML file this tag. It would just scan the whole Azure stuff and say, oh, there's a resource group with this tag on it, and it will show up in, 
uh, in. So we just get the data from, from Azure when, when we visit uh, a component in Backstage. Okay. So there's nothing in, in Backstage there. It just gets it when... Uh, the thing is that backstage is like it knows how to render it and how to display it yeah. and how to yeah. organize it. That's what the, what we did in the Martin created in the plugin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so you guys had to write also the components that organize the data too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so we wrote a backend plugin to pull the, the information from Azure and uh, then I <laughs> bloatly copied another <laughs> front end plugin and uh, <laughs> changed <laughs> the, uh, yeah. the view basically. So we used the same. Uh, they have the, this fully documented. So we use the same uh, technique. So if you have azure.com, the tag selector in our case, so if the resource group in Azure has the tag name called app, we are require all uh, deployments in, uh, in Azure to have uh, this label uh, or this tag. And then in this case, the value is box. So then the backstage then oh. knows how to connect the, the two. So then you just use, if you're familiar with Azure, you're using the Azure resource graph, and there's query resource group with tags equal this. Uh, and that's how the Kubernetes label plugin uh, also works. Cool. Are we back to the PowerPoint now? Yeah, let's do that. OK. Woohoo! Templates. This is where the fun part starts. <laughs> so we have to hurry up a bit, uh, Martin, because... Uh, well, yeah. I'm I getting thirsty. Yeah, so uh, now we're on the, on the self-service part of, uh, of uh, things. Like I said, we had this own portal, NUS. Uh, I don't know what it was created in, probably C-sharp or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we want to automate things as, as much as possible. And um, this is kind of... Uh, part of the landscape we have uh, in, uh, in, in our organization, a bit of everything. Uh, and you want to kind of create a, a paved road, right? <laughs> because uh, it's, it's, I think, uh, I remember the early days of Kubernetes, uh, it, uh, it, it's still magic to me, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's not my area. But you get this uh, thing. So um, we want to create, get, get those uh, uh, developers uh, quickly uh, as, as, uh, as possible uh, on the road. So uh, show us. Uh, back to me again. Yeah, it's of just course. The slides were not a lot of slides. You created that. Uh, OK, yeah. yeah. So the point is, we have a lot of systems. Everyone have a lot of systems uh, in each and every deploy uh, or each and every when you have to interact with any of the these services. All of them have to talk to each other and then for example, when you do a new deployment to Kubernetes, then you have to export, expose the correct port for Prometheus scraping uh, and all, all that kind of stuff. So instead of having a lot of support cases, um, we figured, can we use Backstage to help us deploy or help developers deploy this, at this with the same kind of specification every time? Um, so there's a built-in component or plugin, I guess, in Backstage called the Scaffolder. What it does, uh, I will just show you. Um, so we can go to the front page uh, where we have our tech platform, and then we have run a template. So. This is from the platform team, as you said earlier, is creating a product internally. So if you go to a SaaS offering in the cloud, you always get one click deploy for everything, basically. At least that's what the documentation say. And we want to have the same kind of experience, uh, even though we don't make any money from providing services internally, we still need uh, this kind of uh, service to be an easy, uh, or a very, very easy, as we say uh, in VIPs, uh, well. <laughs> to create uh, new stuff. And it has to be the same thing over and over again. So you want to create a new GitHub repository uh, there are some compliance things that needs to be in place. It needs to be connected to a, a team. It needs to be synced with an Azure AD group. Uh, and once that, back in the day when that was manually done, 
there was always stuff missing, right? Yeah. I think you can all uh, relate to that. And also create new namespaces in AKS is also something that we want to do because you create a namespace, but we also have to create an Azure AD group to get access to that namespace. Uh, and it's not only uh, adding a new namespace to Kubernetes, it's always something more. So the templates in in Backstage can be as simple or as complex as you want. We have this, um, not that one, this one. We have this workshop uh, template thing that we can play a little bit around with. So It's the easiest one to clean up afterwards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. So NDC, now we can create a new application. Uh, I wanted to deploy to the platform workshop a namespace. Uh, if you're working in payments in VIPs, you will choose another namespace. And then you set, oh, I think I need uh, this much CPU, and I think I need uh, this much memory. Uh, then you choose, in this case, uh, only the workshop team. Uh, but if you're using one of our own other plugins, it will get, um, I can show you that as well. Uh, or maybe you don't. Um, then you get to choose the team that you're working on, and you also get to connect it to the system. So Backstage will just list out the systems that we, that it has access to, and then you choose uh, which co uh, system you want this new component to be connected to. Um, then you get the summary, and uh, then hopefully this will work. I will show you how this actually does everything later on, but now it fetches some stuff, um, publishes uh, the GitHub repository, uh, actually it triggers the GitHub workflow as well, I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, now it, we have everything, first of all we have the um, component added to Backstage. So the annotation here, PV, is just uh, so we can delete it later. So PVNDC is what we created, and we had it connected to the platform workshop uh, system, and it's owned by the group team platform workshop in this case. Uh, view source. Now you get, this is how uh, um, a scaffolded template from, um, or a scaffold to get the repository from, for every new application that uh, it's created in VIPs, we will get this kind of um, baseline uh, GitHub repository. So you get the docs folder, uh, and you get some uh, documentation on actually how to get started using uh, the, um, the documentations part. Uh, and then you have uh, a bicep file as an example, and then you have a GitHub workflow as an example, um, and this also have a um, Kubernetes manifest that I will show. Uh, so, and the C, and everything that we inputted in this um, in this uh, template engine inside Backstage is uh, also uh, set here. So we asked for. Uh, CPU and we set the memory. Very up. Any questions on how this works, <laughs> or should I just show you how sure. it works? Sure. Okay. Yeah, ten minutes. <laughs> or actually, it's time for uh, it's actually time for uh, yeah, for this again now. Yeah. No, let's skip it. Do it later. So when we working with the template engine. Um, you have to uh, do some YAML again. Um, I'm not a really fan of YAML, but I learned to live with it. Um, but you, all the fields that we have uh, in um, in the let's see, all the fields that we have here is what's also in here. So you have to fill in the required uh, things, so application name, owner team, docker port, internet port, and namespace, for example. 
um, and then we will the all the files that we fill this repository with is actually taken from uh, from a skeleton uh, structure here. So you can see that we have docs infrastructure and the manifests. Under here you can see the uh, manifest for Kubernetes, which is the same as the repository had in GitHub. And then we will fill in with parameters, we will fill in the app name that you specified during the uh, template uh, from, the, from the backstage. And also everything here is related to uh, to what you filled in, so it, it grabs the values from from the um, the form, and then it adds that to the to the file before it uh, it's added to the GitHub repository. And then you can also do some basic math mathematics uh, as well. Um, Go to the slides. Go to the slides. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So this is kind of a recap on what uh, what happened. So we just kicked off this uh, template, went to GitHub, manifests for it's yeah, pretty awesome I think. Um, uh, it's more. Yeah. <laughs> um, you want me to explain what happens, or uh, I think I think <laughs> most of the uh, you did. It, it is just stiff, uh, shows a little bit because it's it's getting late, um, and then it, it it kicks off a workflow as well, right? So it yep. creates the SBN in Azure, secrets in in GitHub. It's all connected. So um, Azure Container, all the the rights management is is happening in 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 the back as well. So you don't have to 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 think about it as a developer to. Uh, to, uh, to, to do that. So you have a kind of ready workflow in your repository and you can start dumping your app on the Kubernetes cluster and, and, and do your thing, basically. Um, so this is, this is how we started thinking when we started with templating and uh, tried to, to automate this as, as most, much as, uh, as possible. Uh, yeah, we, you did the YAML, uh, YAML thing. <laughs> uh, so let's talk adoption. Uh, and we, we, we round it up uh, here. Um, Vips is just another company. <laughs> uh, I think there's always uh, the, the people who are uh, who are on it, who see the, the value for them, who have um, I think often most control uh, on their time and, uh, and and application. And then some teams you just need to show them, and you find someone in the team uh, that that okay, I can do that. I'll I'll take that on me in the, in the next uh, next sprint or something. Um, and the rest, uh, we, we went a bit bold a couple of weeks ago and just added all the repositories with the bit, uh, so to get it into backstage, so that it's 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 visible. And then uh, you, we tried to get the conversation uh, talking. So so we're not there yet, but um, for every new team, because we're merging with a company from Denmark and uh, Lithuania, it's, this is the standard. This is how you should work. So uh, that, that's uh, well, timing-wise, uh, pretty pretty neat. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, I love PowerPoint designer. I'm a very <laughs> people. So. so did we close the gap? I, I, I I'm, will not say uh, we closed it, but uh, for me this was a really uh, I think nice way to to make uh, documentation uh, a more living thing. Just getting the the the, the information that that's already there from from Azure, from GitHub, from Azure DevOps, from whatever you uh, you want uh, want to use. Um, and, and, and again, keep it as close to the code uh, as possible. All the people need to write it. The development teams are all very busy with creating new features and all that. So let's, let's make it as easy as possible. And um, again, in, in the, the picture showed, it, it also a real big win for the organization. All the, the, the governance and, 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 and the, the, the ops teams have really, uh, uh, really uh, benefit from it. But it's still you have to do it together. It's 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 a mindset you have to, to push each other to to do it. It's still documentation. It's even though we get copilot, it uh, it doesn't uh, write itself. Um, so yeah, what are we doing in the, in the near future uh, with backstage? Um, 
templates, uh, we're making them more granular. So uh, we started with the complete package, but sometimes we only need a repository or just a namespace or just uh, some some resource groups in, in Azure. So we make that a little bit more, more granular. Um, New templates as well. Uh, we had one, uh, and then it's funny that like, yeah, we need to automate everything, but maybe you don't want to automate everything because it, ca it can have a cost implication as well. If everybody can make a su subscription and deploy whatever they want in that subscription, it's, uh, mm, yeah, it's nice for Microsoft, but uh, uh, not for the, the bank account of VIPs. Um, and we noticed that we needed to create a, a, a shorter feedback loop to the, um, uh, to the, the people running the templates. So, um, there was a lot of happening, as you saw in the template, but sometimes maybe it fails or it waits on something. Uh, so now uh, two of our colleagues created a Slack bot that gives a loop for, uh, for, uh, directly to Slack of, of your choice, which you also, we also can, can use in, in other uh, workflows as well. So that's, I think, a neat thing. Uh, and as we learned on the Microsoft Build last year, and uh, we, we're, uh, Microsoft MVP is more Azure and uh, shit. Um, so uh, probably AI in uh, backstage as well. Uh, this is what we had for now. If you have any questions, feel free. Yeah. Yeah. To get back to the service catalog. Yeah. The example we've seen of new web APIs, like in the traditional sense. What other stuff can you put in there? For example, a component that is only reachable through a message broker. Oh, so the question is, what kind of components can you put into the service catalog? Or, yeah, anything. You can define it in the general file. So That's still manual work. <laughs> so let me, there's, there's a fixed uh, sort of entity type that Backstage has. Uh, if you have like a shared uh, database, for example, that is used by many applications, uh, that's not to me, that's not necessarily a resource type. Resource is just uh, something that exists, um, but if it's if it actually is used as a service by other other things, then you can just create that SQL server as a component itself or as a ser service itself, and then link them together uh, to uh, to the other services. A lot of services now, but is that answering your question? Because No, no, no. No, no. You can, you can. Web APIs yeah. is uh, another thing. So you have to specifically say it's an API, and then you specify the Open API specification. But it ha the API actually has to be linked to another component. So yeah. the component provides an API, but it not, doesn't need to provide an API. Yeah. Um, Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have another question. Fine. <laughs> um, so basically, like from what I gather, and I shared with this with you guys before the talk, um, this is like part of the broader uh, thing called platform engineering, right? But yeah. In the modern, in the in the operation sense, right? In the pro, uh, platform platform as a product sense. Yeah. So what I wonder is, first of all, how much of your work centers around backstage, and uh, in, if there is uh, more work, then what is it? Like, do you provide perhaps, as a platform engineer that treats the platform as a product, do you provide um, like shared libraries? Or what else do you do, I, I wonder? In the relation to backstage or? In relation to the product as a service uh, approach. Okay. It's a little bit going out of the topic. Yeah, a little bit. I can try to answer. So Quickly. first. We, we, otherwise we take it off yeah. the door. First, first off. Thirsty, so. yeah. First off, the platform uh, team needs to be in the mindset that everything they provide has to be a product that entitles proper documentation and self-service in most cases. And support. And support. Okay. And then uh, what we did with Backstage in particular is uh, every new and existing service that the platform area provides is in order to create adoption on using Backstage is the only front end for the internal product is actually true Backstage. Mm -hmm. 
There is no other way to request a new namespace on Kubernetes. We just refer to run that template. Uh, and I think that is the key. So you need to have one front end for everything. There's no other front end for Spotify than the actual Spotify app, right? Yeah. So if you, that's what we thought that we should do as so, well. So we're now looking as a platform team, what, what are the areas we use the most manual time on or we can put in? And that's things like DNS changes or all that kind of small things that sometimes can take a lot of time. We're looking for, okay, maybe we can put it into backstage and make it just a one, one stop shop for those things. Uh, in, in, in yeah, it, it depends a bit on, uh, so it, it, we really have uh, a lot of great people like having this mindset, how can we make, what are we, because everybody in the platform team is also doing support. So that gives a good feeling with what, what's the current state of the organization's need and what do we need to, to fix. Uh, if, if like, it, it's easier to create something new if two or three people get agitated by it instead of the one on support like saying, oh, this is my problem. So. And then, and then you have also the people that can fix it as well with making a template in Backstage or something. So, yeah. Cool. I don't want to hold you off for the beers, but we can stay another five minutes. Uh, and the rest of you are free to leave, uh, <laughs> including that guy in the corner. <laughs> yeah, he had a long day. So, uh, <laughs> let's give our applause to him then. then uh. <laughs>